hello everyone and then welcome to another tutorial video okay so this video will be treating functions okay so we'll be treating um functions bounded function monotonic function and all that all right so in case you watch our previous videos we began from um point six okay rational and irrational numbers point six and all that and all that down to you know function so we are towards functions okay so in this video will be treating functions and bounded functions and all that so in case you are new to this channel and then you want to see more of these videos i'd urge you to you know subscribe to the channel turn on your post notifications so that whenever you upload any video you don't miss out okay and then in case you have any questions leave them in the comment section kindly of like the video so that the youtube algorithm will help push it to other students who might need this video um to help augment their studies okay so with further, without further much ado let's just dive right into this video okay so now we are treating what functions we we already know that we represent um functions in this format okay so could be in this format okay so this is like a function of f of x okay function of f of x right or you could just write the function as what the function is to x okay going into maybe y okay right so it's either way it's either you write it in this format or you write it in this format either one goes okay now let's look at what bounded functions okay let's look at bounded functions bounded functions so for bounded functions just like um we treated other forms of bounds okay it's all about their boundaries okay so either upper bound lower bound greatest lowest bound or lowest upper bound okay but for this we'll be treating only the upper and the lower bounds okay and then once you know the upper and lower bounds you could just implement the same technique i initially showed you in our previous video to find out your greatest lower bound and what lowest upper bound okay so for one when you want to identify whether um a function is what bounded above okay or bounded below okay so for bounded above this is what we this is the letter we usually use to what represent upper bound okay this is for upper bound and then we have what the lower case and representing what the lower bound okay the lower bound now for upper bounds okay for upper bounds we have the function okay the function f of x function f of x must always be less than or equal to the what upper bound to make it what bounded above okay and then with respect to what specific um set of values given as what a and b note that these represent what closed set okay these brackets represent closed set so whenever you are given a closed set and then you are given a function and then you find out that your upper bound is greater than the function it means that it's what bounded above okay it means that it's bounded above so we will treat certain um examples so that you get to understand okay it's very very simple right so let's look at what for bounded below okay so you know that lowercase m represents what lower bound okay so once you find any function f of x okay and then the f of x is greater or equal to what the lower bound it means that and then you are given out an open set of values that's a and b note the difference for upper bound it has to be closed and then for lower bound it's usually open okay and then once you are given this format and then once you find your function then it's greater than the what the lower bound it means that it's what bounded below okay it's bounded below so this might sound cumbersome so let's just take an example so that you get to understand okay so let's take the first example so consider the interval okay so consider the interval you've been given this interval okay interval of one let's say minus one or one okay and then you are given what the function of what f of x to be equal to what for minus x and then you have to find whether is what this function is bounded above or bounded below okay so 
you have to find whether this function is bounded this function is bounded above or below so let's first write the function out okay and then we are giving the intervals to what minus one and one okay so this is the interval so in order to find out whether the function is bounded above or below all you have to do is just substitute the intervals okay so this is all you have to do so first you substitute this x1 and then this x2 okay x1 x2 so first you start substitute what x1 on substitute s1 you have what four minus what minus one okay this will give us what five and then once you substitute s to four minus which x is what one over here Okay, one is over here. So we have what? So now you can notice that we found our upper and lower bound. Okay, so our upper bound, upper bound, is three to be our lower bound. Okay, this is just simple, very very simple. Three is less than the function, and then five is greater than or equal to the function. That's what we just mean. But once you know this, once you know how to arrive at the upper and lower bound, you are good to go. Okay. So now let's treat what monotonic functions. Okay. Okay, so let's look at monotonic functions. Okay, so for monotonic functions, you have monotonic increasing and what monotonic decreasing. Okay, now let's look at monotonic increasing. For monotonic increasing, okay, you'll be given a um, value for x1 and what x2. Okay, and then once you want to know whether Function is monotonic increasing. X1 is always less than what X2. Okay, X1 is always less than X or in, in the other way around, X2 is always greater than X1. Okay, so once you are given any function and then you substitute X1 and then X2, you get to know that the function X2, the function with what X2 is greater than what the function with what X1. Okay, that this is what we call what monotonic increasing now let's look at monotonic decreasing decreasing you could notice that it's just the vice versa okay you'll be given function of what x1 okay and x2 now once you notice that the x1 note that the x1 and then the x2 will be given and then once they are given you you will notice that sometimes again the x1 will be or might be less than what the x2 but this is the most important part okay i always tell my students that ignore these portions okay and then focus on where you have the functions now for monotonic decreasing f of x1 okay is always greater than what f of x2 okay keep this in mind let me put it in different colors okay keep this in mind it's very very important just forget about this portion okay and then forget um focus on this portion okay and then for monotonic decreasing the f of x1 is always greater than what f of x2 okay so sometimes let's say it could be greater than or equal to okay just keep it in mind that it's always the x1 will always come up on top okay so let's let's take an example let's take an example okay so let's say let's say you are giving the function f of x okay to be equal to what 2x plus 1 okay and then you are giving the interval okay you are giving the interval giving the interval to be 0 1 okay now we want to find out whether this function is what monotonic either monotonic increasing or monotonic decreasing note that 0 is our what, x1 and what um 1 is our what, x2 so from here you could you could just say that since taking into consideration x1 and x2 you could just say that this is what monotonic increasing because that's because of this what expression okay and then again you could notice that it's monotonic decreasing because of this expression because they are the same okay that's why initially i stated that don't focus much on this notation just focus focus on this portion okay let's see how we solve that 2x plus 1 and then we have what the interval 0 and then what 1 now let's pick let's substitute f of x f of x of 1 okay which is what zero so let's substitute zero over here so we have what plus one which is what one okay and then let's substitute um f of x2 which is what two of one 
and then plus one which is what three okay so from here you can notice that f of x2 is greater than what f of x1 okay it means that this rule applies okay f of s2 is greater than f of x1 because f of s2 give us 3 f of x1 give us 1 so it is what this function is what monotonic it is monotonic increasing okay monotonic increasing you can see how simple this this is but in case you had what f of x1 being greater than f of s2 this this function would have been what this function would have been what monotonic decreasing okay now let's take a general question so that we call it a day let's take a general question so that we call it a day now you are given what let's look at the last example so we are given what a function f of x to be equal to what x plus 1 divided by what x and then you are given the interval of what you are given intervals of let's say an interval let's say 1 and what 5 okay so this is what our question you are given f of x and then you are told to find what the boundedness okay so a find the what boundedness this boundedness is all about me finding the upper bound or what lower bound and then and then you find what monotonically okay Mono, monotonically that means that you are either finding what the increasing monotonicity or what monotonic decrease okay let's let's look at the solution now we have the function of what f of x being what x plus one divided by what x and then we are given the intervals to what one five okay now let's find what the boundaries so you find the boundaries you know that it is what x1 and then this what x2 so you just insert them into this expression then you end up with what your upper and lower bound okay so in certain f of x1 which is what one we have what one plus one so we have one plus one divided by one i don't know how why i'm even doing this i would have written the answer straight for you but i want you to understand that's why you could notice that every video i make i try to go systematically okay i try to explain stuff systematically i just don't write the answers of head okay now so from here you can notice that this was two okay and then we have what f of x2 being substituted which is what five so we have what five plus one divided by five okay and then this will give us what six on five so this is this is like one point five and um, one point two something okay one point something now from here you could notice that um 1.2 something okay so for me you could notice that we have our upper bound and what lower bound okay this is our upper bound and this is what our lower bound okay right so from initial um, initial explanation of what boundary or boundedness you could notice that once you substitute into the main function you end up with what your upper bound and what lower bound now let's find it monotonically okay b mono Monically, okay. So we are trying to find whether it's what increasing monotonicity or what monotonic decreasing, okay? In monotonic increasing or monotonic decrease. Okay, so we have the function of x being equal to what x plus one divided by x, and then we have the interval as what one and five. Now let's see. Let's first find what let's first insert our x1 and x2, okay? X1 and x2. So in certain x1 and the function to go to 1 plus 1 divided by 1 which is the same as 2 okay and then in certain s2 we have the function being equal to what the same over here okay so we have what 5 plus 1 divided by 5 which is what 6 on 5 now from here you could notice that f of x1 okay is greater than what f of what x2 Okay, so from here you can notice that this was two days what 1.2 something okay that's six on five okay and then since f of x1 is greater than f of x2 this what monotonic what monotonic decreasing this is monotonic decreasing okay you see how simple this is 
subscribe to the channel, turn on your post notification because these are the type of videos we make on this channel. And then, hope to see you in our next video where we'll be treating differentiation, okay? So in that video, I'll teach you how to either use your calculator to differentiate. Yes, you've never heard that before, okay? You know, you find out how to use your calculator to differentiate and then do it manually. Same applies to what finding the limit, okay? I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.